It starts like a Hollywood blockbuster. A lone astronaut stranded on the red planet fights to stay alive, battling dust storms, growing food in barren soil, and relying on sheer human ingenuity. That's The Martian, the 2015 movie where Matt Damon's character survives on Mars after a space mission goes wrong. For years, the topic of Mars has triggered human imagination. But what if it's not just a movie? What if in 20 years people can actually live and work on Mars? Space agencies and private companies are working tirelessly to turn this science fiction into reality. But what exactly awaits those brave enough to call Mars home? For now, only robots have explored Mars. But the list of countries and organizations eager to send humans keeps growing. America's NASA plans to send astronauts to Mars in the 2030s as part of its Atmis and Moon to Mars programs. Atmis is a moon program that serves as a stepping stone to Mars. Tech billionaire Elon Musk envisions building a human settlement on Mars within our lifetime through his SpaceX company. His Starship rockets are designed for deep space travel, including Mars. In China, the China National Space Administration has already sent orbiters and rovers to Mars. A crude mission is on their radar. After successfully placing a probe in Mars' orbit in 2021, the United Arab Emirates has set its insights on human exploration. Lastly, Russia, India, Japan, and other nations on the European continent through the European Space Agency are steadily advancing technologies that could one day contribute to human Mars missions. As Elon Musk stated, I want to die on Mars just not on impact. Is he ambitious? Yes, but space history shows humanity rarely backs down from a challenge. The big question now stands, why Mars? Why spend millions, billions to travel to a frozen, airless desert 225 million kilometers away? Mars could become a second home for humanity. Advocates say Mars could be humanity's plan B offering a backup option if Earth faces catastrophic disasters that could be natural or man-made, you know humans. According to Musk, it's life insurance for the human species. With Earth's growing population, pressure on resources and environmental challenges, some see Mars as the next frontier for human expansion. Additionally, exploring Mars helps answer some of humanity's oldest questions. Has life ever existed on Mars? Are we alone in the universe, and can humans adapt to live in a different world? For all its potential, we should know that Mars is no paradise. It has so many undesirable features. It is born chilling cold with the average temperature being negative 63 degrees centigrade and extreme lows reaching negative 125 degrees centigrade at the poles. Mars's thin atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide. Humans will need pressurized suits or habitats to survive in the unbreathable air. Mars also has deadly radiation. Without a protective magnetic field like Earth is, Mars is constantly bombarded by cosmic rays and solar radiation. Like in Matt Damon's The Martian, dust storms are prevalent and can engulf the entire planet, reducing visibility and damaging equipment. In short, life on Mars will demand technology resilient and constant innovation. Can we grow food on Mars? In The Martian, the protagonist grows potatoes in Martian soil using human ingenuity and a lot of courage. While the real situation is more complicated, scientists believe growing food on Mars is within reach. Experiments on Earth using simulated Martian soil have successfully grown crops like lettuce, radishes and even beans. Mars soil contains essential minerals, though it will need treatment to remove harmful substances like perchlorates. Additionally, greenhouses equipped with LED lighting, recycled water, and controlled air could sustain crops year-round. Dr. Massa of the NSA leading space agriculture research says, if we want to live on Mars, we must learn to grow our own food there. Plants will be vital not just for nutrition, but for oxygen and mental well-being. Is construction possible on Mars? Bringing all materials from Earth would be impractical. 
future Mars settlers will likely build using local resources, a concept known as in situ resource re utilization. 3D printing using Martian soil or regolith could produce bricks and other building materials. Underground lava tubes or caves offer natural shelters, providing protection from radiation and temperature extremes. SpaceX envisions pressurized dooms and inflatable habitats as initial homes for settlers. Building on Mars won't be easy, but humans have always adapted to their environments. From deserts like the Sahara to the oceans like the Indian, humans have always found a way out. So let's talk about the minerals of Mars, the hidden minerals of Mars. Water is critical and Mars has a lot of it, though it is not in liquid lakes on the surface. Space explorers have found that polar ice caps store vast amounts of frozen water. Thus, radar studies suggest there may be liquid water lakes beneath the South Pole. Ice buried underground at mid latitudes could be accessible to future explorers. Water could support drinking, agriculture, and even be split into hydrogen for fuel and oxygen for breathing. Mars also holds minerals like sulfur, iron, magnesium, and possibly rare metals that will be beneficial to future industries. So let's talk about the price tag. How much will it cost? Reaching and settling on Mars is among the most expensive human endeavors ever conceived. NASA's Mars programs have already cost billions, so what are the estimated costs? A single crude mission to Mars could range from $100 billion to $500 billion. SpaceX aims to lower costs of the reusable rockets, potentially reducing the price for future passengers, though tickets remain out of reach for the average person for now. Despite the cost, many believe the benefits that is scientific, existential and economic justify the investment. But so you've paid the money. You have invested. You are a resident of Mars. So who will govern Mars? With no borders or government, Mars presents a legal grey area. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967, signed by over 100 nations, including the United States, China and Russia, states that no country can claim ownership of planets, space exploration must benefit all humankind, and no weapons of mass destruction in space. But the treaty doesn't address future settlements, resource ownership or governance. Experts predict settlers will eventually need local authorities for safety and dispute resolution, international agreements on mining and resource sharing, and systems to ensure Mars does not become a lawless frontier. In the words of planetary scientist Dr. Robert Zubrin, founder of the Mars Society, if humans go to Mars to stay, they will need their own laws, their own government, and ultimately their own civilization. Mars offers extraordinary challenges but also extraordinary promise. As NASA Administrator Bill Nelson recently remarked, exploring Mars is not just about reaching another planet, it's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible and inspiring generations to dream bigger. The red planet is cold, barren and unforgiving, but so was the moon once, so were the distant continents, unexplored ocean and vast deserts. With human determination, technology and vision, Mars will one day be home for humans. A second world where we can plant our flag not in conquest but in hope. My name is Butanda Shavik for Science Television Network, encouraging you to stay curious and please do subscribe to our channel for more science-related content. Until next time.